Hey everybody, welcome to Crime on the Record. My name is Jason, and as always, I have my wife and co-host Candace with us. So this week we are going to be talking about Jesse Leopold. Yes. Um, so what we know about Jesse, uh, 23 years old, he disappeared on Thursday, October 13th in 2016. He wasn't married, um, doesn't have any children, and honestly, I don't know that he was even dating anyone at the time of his disappearance. He, as far as I know, had recently moved back from Texas and had stayed with his dad for a little while before moving out. So his roommate slash co-worker, because he worked and they, they worked and lived together, um, said that he had started acting odd that day while they were watching a newscast. He's never said that I know of what the newscast was. And I know I remember seeing someone ask the dad, you know, what was the newscast about? And he said that he wasn't sure. So it's odd to me that like nobody's asked this entire time. What was on? Yeah, that would have been my first question. Like what was on that upset him? Yeah. Cause I mean, if, if, if it's enough to bring it up. Yeah. Then why wouldn't you say what it was? Yeah. Yeah, so he said that uh, the roommate said he got really quiet and stayed that way for the rest of the day. So much so that when they got to work, his boss had him working alone because he told him he wasn't focused. Yeah, and at 6.30 that night while at work, um, he was seen hanging up his jacket at WNG Marketing, which sounds like something else, but it's actually a meatpacking plant. I know, it sounds like a a marketing yeah. place. Yeah. It sounds like, you know, when, when I was like, Oh, you've seen hanging up his jacket. I was thinking like a suit or something, something like that. But yeah, W and G marketing is, is a meatpacking plant. Um, when he hung his jacket up, I mean, his coworkers didn't think anything about it. They just thought he was headed to the restroom. Um, but he told his manager that he was going out to pick up some uh, medicine. Yeah. Now that was at six 30. So at seven 30 or approximately so, they discovered that he had left work in his truck because again, they originally thought he just went to the restroom and then around seven 30, they're like, Oh my goodness, he's left. His truck's gone. And they realized that his phone, his sunglasses and his personal shoes were there, which sounded kind of odd to me originally. But if you go with us for a minute here, you'll see why we say his personal shoes. All right. Yeah. So on Friday, October 14th, his roommate contacted uh, his father, Jerry, to let him know that Jesse was acting weird and didn't come home the night before. So his dad, um, doing what I would think most parents would do, uh, he, he contacted Boone, Story, and Hamilton County Police and the hospitals to see if maybe he had been arrested or admitted to one of the hospitals. But um, Jesse's truck uh, was ticketed by the Department of Natural Resources for being parked overnight in Ledges State Park. And, you know, I think when we were discussing it, you had made the comment, and you're absolutely correct. That is a very distinct truck. I mean, and one of the biggest reasons we posted a picture of it, because when I was reading about the case and they said his big purple truck, I was like, okay, this I got to see. Yeah, I mean, I mean, who has a purple truck? I mean, yeah, I mean just, just saying a purple truck would be enough, but then, I mean, you look at the it looks like the tires are a little bit smaller than what you would normally see. And, and also there you can see that on the front grill, it looks like there's, you know, a, a bigger grill on the front of the truck. So it's, it, it stands out. Do you think it's the tires are smaller or is it lifted? Uh, yeah, it might be lifted. I mean, what do I know? I don't, I don't, <laughs> I, don't yeah, I, mean, I don't drive a truck. So, um, yeah. I was just it, thinking yeah, if it's, it. I was thinking if it's lifted, it probably, you know, look that much bigger because it's sitting up that much higher. Yeah. Either way, it would, you can't mistake it for a different truck. No, no. Um, so, you know, at that time, they still didn't know where his truck was. It had, we find out later, they find out later that it had been ticketed on the 14th. But at this point, dad still has no idea. Friends don't know. So dad makes up a bunch of flyers and speaks with some of the community members and together they start hanging them up, which again, 
you know, exactly what you should be out doing. Mm -hmm. And then um, dad also went so far as to post a um, post on Facebook with Jesse's information, as well as the information on his truck, asking for people to get in touch if they had any idea where he might be. And it sounds like it might have worked. Yeah, because on Sunday, October 16th, around seven o'clock in the morning, someone came forward with information that Jesse's truck was found in Ledges State Park. Um, and, you know, as you can see on the map here, it's not very far away. It's about 41 minutes, about 30 ish miles, 34 miles. Um, so his dad found out and immediately went down there. So by 10 o'clock, uh, his dad had retrieved Jesse's truck and filed a missing persons report. Now it's, it's scary enough to, to find your son's truck in a place like this when he's supposed to not be anywhere near there. Um, but the truck was found with the doors and the toolbox unlocked and the keys were still in the ignition was also at the park. It was at the last paved parking spot before the fourth water crossing, which when I read that, I was like, what does that, what, what does that matter? Was I mean, but when you think about it, it, it's, it's saying the truck wasn't just like the first parking lot. As soon as you pull into the park, yeah, you, know, you had to cross over three water crossings before, you know, they actually found the truck. So, and to go to the last parking space because, you know, who knows if the parking lot was full, if it was empty, why not park in the first space? Why did you go all the way? It sounds almost like they're making a point to tell you that because they went as far as possible to hide this truck. Yeah. Like they couldn't, they couldn't cross over the fourth water crossing. So they had to stop there. Yeah. And I mean, if he went missing that night and they found his truck early in the morning, you got to think he probably, it was probably put there when the park wasn't busy. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. But his, Rubber work boots that he walked out in when he left work that night um, were in the bed of the truck and along with his socks, which is also odd because, you know, I'm not going into a park with no shoes on. Mm -mm. And so, no socks? Definitely yeah, not. Yeah, but no that anything. does explain why they said his personal shoes were left at work. Yeah, because I would imagine, you know, I'm not trying to wear my personal shoes if I'm working at a meatpacking plant. Um, so, you know, I didn't even think about that, but duh, like, I can't believe <laughs> I didn't think about it. Like, of course you'd be in there with rubber work boots, but I mean, yeah. when, when I read personal shoes, I was like, as opposed to what, but yeah. then I felt really stupid. <laughs> yeah. Cause I mean, I'm not wearing anything that's other than work clothes. Like that would have its own special spot at the house. Cause I mean, yeah, you know, Hey, we all, not everybody eats meat, but for those who do, you know, we need these people doing this job, but I would definitely have a special spot if I was, if I was working in there. Um, search and rescue went out to search along with friends and volunteers. Yeah. And, and from what I understand, there was a pretty good bit of people. And then by Monday, the 17th, a group of dogs um, were brought out and they searched around the truck, but they were not able to pick up a trail, which I found interesting because it's, his truck so his scent should be in it so the dog should have been able to pick up his scent in the truck so why were they not able to pick up a trail yeah and even if they couldn't necessarily pick up his scent if he left from work and let's say he did drive to that to that park and he was the one that drove there they should at least be able to pick up the scent of like where he worked i mean i would think that he, that would even be a stronger smell than even his own, you know, the, his own scent that he would leave behind. But dogs didn't pick up anything, which is really concerning. Yeah. And, you know, in addition to the dogs searching that Monday on Tuesday, KCCI, which I believe is the local news channel, channel came out with their helicopter to search aer aerially. I can never say that word without my jaw. So the helicopter was in the air? Yeah, so yeah, I should just say it that way. But with his yeah. TMJ, certain words cause me to slur. So, <laughs> so have you ever heard of, you know, typically it's the you know, law enforcement's helicopter, but have you heard of like news helicopters coming out to help with search? Is that is that common? I don't think so. Um, and I'll look and see, but I'm, I mean, I'm almost positive. Yeah, 
KCCI is a television station in Des Moines, Iowa. So it was them. All I can think is that it was, you know, I don't know how much news there is in Iowa. I don't know how much is going on. I mean, from what we've seen lately, there's a lot of tri true crime kind of stuff going on out there. But um, in, in Idaho, it seems like the two eyes, they're just, uh, it's been wild. But, um, you know, maybe there just wasn't a lot. And this was the story that happened to get picked up. I mean, you know, think about the woman uh, this past year who went missing in Memphis. You know, how many people go missing in Memphis? But yeah. That one person went missing and all of a sudden it blew up all over the place. Yeah, that is true. So search efforts continued from the 19th of October through the 23rd uh, of October, which is from Wednesday to Sunday. They're, they're continuing to look. Um, his dad then creates a Facebook page, um, as we, we typically see now, you know, of trying to just get anybody to, to help look and maybe give some info if anybody has anything, you know, I mean, it's a smart thing to do. It's a, we see it today all the time. It is. It, it It's one of those double-edged swords though, because, you know, we see some of these groups get kind of out of control. So, you know, it's, it's tough. Um, I will say though, his dad still has this page to this day since 2016 and he's still, on there. I mean, yeah. his most recent post was, I believe this past week. So, I mean, he's still very, very active on there. Yeah. And, you know, he, it's not crazy wild, like a lot of these pages, but there are some people that kind of get into some heated discussions on there and some words are thrown. It's, well, it's interesting. I mean, it, it's not shocking. Um, based on what we're going to discuss a little bit later as to why people might be getting into these uh, type of heated discussions. Yeah. So just like the, the news helicopter came out to help, which, which was pretty cool. Um, Seven Oaks uh, on the 25th, they started offering free kayak rentals to anyone who was wishing to help search the river, which I thought was pretty cool too. That, you know, it seems like these people, I mean, you're talking almost an hour away. They probably didn't know who this guy was, but everybody's hey, willing to help and, and do whatever they can. So that was pretty cool to see different places, you know, around the community and even further out, you know, trying to help find him. Yeah. And I looked and Seven Oaks has like snowboarding, ski equipment, uh, the kayaks. I mean, they have so much stuff going on there that that was pretty cool. Because, you know, places like that, you think a lot of times they're probably so busy, they're not really paying attention to what's going on. Yeah. If that makes sense, you know, like they're just, they're, they're focused on their little section and they're not so much paying attention to, to this. So for them to come out and be like, Hey, whatever we can do. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. I mean, it is. Um, so speaking of the Facebook group, uh, some of the information we got from there and the pictures, you know, these pictures right here, are the, two that I pulled that I just thought were the cutest because, you know, the picture to the right, that is the kind of picture a mom usually talks her family into. I mean, let's be real. Like that is not something that dad's like, let's do it. Yeah. Let's get dressed up. And do well, it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, your mom talked, talked to her husband into doing one of these old yep. timey photos and, and <laughs> right. uh, he doesn't seem like the old timey photo kind of guy, but she wanted to do it, so so he did it. But, I mean, you got him. He's, he's just him and his kids out there. Yeah, so, like, nobody's talking him into it. He just was like, hey, let's do it. And then, you know, you had said before, him just sitting on the floor playing blocks with his kid. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, honestly, in this picture, it looks like he's playing with the blocks and his son's just watching. I mean, it's, it's such a cute moment. But the funny thing is, look how happy his son is. Like, yeah. even just watching. Yeah. Um. So I, I thought that was good because there are so many pictures on there that I, we couldn't possibly, I mean, we'd be here all night trying to go through all of them, but I thought those two gave like a good representation of the kind of stuff that you see on there in the love that you see from this dad for these kids. I mean, he, he truly loves his son. 
Yeah, and just so everybody knows, if you're listening to this on a podcast and not watching it on YouTube, if you go to cotrpod.com, we'll have all the pictures and, and all the slides that we're using to discuss this. So you can find it there while you're listening to the podcast. Yes. Okay, so on the Facebook group, some of the information that um, we were able to glean from that. So I found out that Jesse had admitted himself to the hospital several times before. So he suffered from, from bipolar disorder and anxiety. I'm not sure what else, but I, I do know that with bipolar disorder, a lot of times people will check themselves into the hospital and it's very smart of them to do so. You know, when, when they get to a point that they can understand that they're about to be in a manic episode or that they're in a manic episode and they can't handle it. Um, you know, a lot of times they have, thankfully the, the, um, the self, I can't think of the word I'm looking for the self-awareness. Yeah. The self-awareness to know that, you know, okay, I need, I need help right now. Um, but when he had checked himself in on these several occasions, they would draw his blood and find drugs in his system that he had not been prescribed. So um, I'm assuming that is what led to the discussion with his dad be about um, supplementing medication because he had had a drug problem in the past and dad said that that was over with, that he had gotten clean. He had, you know, gone out to Texas for a while, gotten his act together, come back, and that he really wanted to, you know, make something of himself and and not, you know, sell drugs, buy drugs, anything. He just wanted to live a normal, quiet life. But um, I am imagining because of the way it's described that one of the other things he dealt with was ADHD. Because after, you know, they're having these discussions about how these drugs are coming up in his system, he tells his dad that he supplements his medication with meth sometimes when he can't afford to fill his prescription or he runs out ahead of time. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I don't know how close they are because I've never done meth, um, but you know, Adderall is a, a form of methamphetamine salts, so they got to be somewhat comparable. Um, now, after he went missing, his dad checked because, you know, the boss, if you remember, he told him he was leaving to go fill his medicine. Mm -hmm. So his dad checked and said that he was not due to fill his medication until the 21st. And although I don't really know with HIPAA laws that they're allowed to do this. And my understanding is he talked to the pharmacist and the pharmacist is like, well, I couldn't fill it till the 21st. I don't know if the pharmacist is supposed to be giving out that information, but, but he did. Well, and I mean, yeah, maybe you're not supposed to, but it does at least help with the timeline a little bit or maybe yeah. give an explanation as to why he left. Yeah. Cause his dad believes, you know, that with the discussion they had that, since he wasn't due to for it to be filled until the 21st and it was the what 13th that, you know, he, he may have gone out to buy some meth to supplement until he could get it filled. Yeah. And this next part too is, it's really troubling considering, you know, he's, you know, he's missing. Uh, but a few weeks before um, he went missing, he told his dad that if something happened to him, it was, one of three people. So he identified three people that, Hey, if something happens to me, these are the people that it could be, which even before he went missing, I'm sure th that's, it's a pretty troubling thing to hear, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. that, you know, he, have somebody say that to you. Um, but Jason, Corey, and someone two doors down are, are the people that, you know, these three people. And apparently the person that was two doors down from, Jason is who they were buying drugs from. Yeah, because I believe at the time Corey was staying with Jason. And then whoever lived two doors down from Jason is who they were buying the drugs from. There are two Jasons that the dad keeps referencing, though. Now, when I originally read through and saw that he had told his dad that if something happened, it was one of three people that he was talking about both of the Jasons and someone else. Um, 
and didn't see the other name mentioned, but I kept remembering something about Corey. So I went back and looked and saw that, in fact, he did say Jason Corey and then someone two doors down. So I don't know if that other, the person two doors down is the other Jason or not, but there's a Jason R and a Jason K. And, you know, if you go to the Facebook page, you can very easily find out the names. Um, I'm not going to put them out there here because they haven't been charged with anything. Yeah. So um, in addition to the Facebook page, dad has done one podcast. Um, my understanding is that, you know, cause I did look at what he possibly talked to us and I saw on the page that he said, you know, been there, done that. I've already talked to somebody like he just did not want to go down that road again. So I did not bother him. Um, but he did go on the vanish podcast a few years ago and he said that he felt like the roommates were scared to talk. So he feels like they know more. They just are too scared to, to tell what they know. And he said that one of them, had even gone so far as to go out and buy a gun and you know, okay, that might not be too odd except for the fact that he said this guy was friends with Jesse since they were little kids and he was not the type to have a gun, much less carry one around. So for him to go out and buy one, he feels like he was scared of something. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a big step. Yeah. I mean, you're going from being afraid and, than being so afraid that you're you're going out and buying something that you would typically not even have. So, and that makes me wonder if maybe um, the roommate, and this is pure speculation on my part, but I wonder if maybe the roommate does remember what that newscast was about and put something together and is scared now because he might have an idea of what's going on. Yeah, that newscast is, yeah, it's interesting. Well, I mean, his dad, you know, like we said, he's still he's still active on the Facebook page today. So, you know, back then he, he wasn't giving up. He kept an eye on some properties that he was concerned about. And I mean, months after Jesse disappeared, uh, he was actually able to get enough info to have one of the guys he believes that had something to do with Jesse's disappearance arrested for theft of a Harley. So, I mean, that's not messing around. He's, he's, it sounds like he's, he's conducting his own investigation. He's oh yeah. Yeah. Very much so. Sadly though, even though to my understanding, he had two other outstanding warrants, they still released him on bail. And so he, after his release, he goes home and they find him and his mother in an upstairs bedroom shot to death, which highly suspect sounding to me. Yeah. Um, he, he said that law enforcement was very hush hush about their deaths, not wanting to talk about it, which I mean, obviously is going to lead to more speculation. It, not to mention the fact that they also said no foul play suspected. So this is the way they wrote it up in the paper. No foul play suspected gun found in home. Local authorities considered this case closed. Say what now? No, <laughs> I mean, and, and that's it. Yeah. I mean, even if one shot the other, foul play would have been involved in that, right? So I mean, even even if it's a consensual, I guess so to speak, murder suicide, it's still it's it's still foul play. I mean, even if if you want if if you want to end your life that way. I mean, so yeah, I mean it's foul play. So I don't and, understand how it didn't. You know, reading about it on that Facebook page, I saw some people talking about it and the way they were talking, it's just considered a double suicide. That's how they're, that's how they understand the police to have explained it. But like you said, when we were talking about it, they found a gun. So where's the other one if they both did it? Yeah. I mean, because I mean, you do gunshot residue tests and everything else. I mean, so I'm, I'm kind of curious how they just came up with, all right. Yep. It's no, no foul play. We're good here. We're good. We're done. So Jesse's dad met with the, their family members and he actually saw the home with blood spatter all over it and the autopsy photos. So Jesse's dad and the family all agreed that something about this was off. 
It's just there was something wrong with, with what they were seeing and it didn't make any sense to them. So they tried to find out what the suicide note said because there was one left, but police told them that they had it, but they were never going to see it. And police told them they were never going to know what it had, what it said on there, which just leads to even more you know, yeah. suspicion and, and causes you to speculate and wonder why. If it, especially if you're look, if you're able to see the autopsy photos, like you could see those, but not the suicide note. Yeah, I mean, because the, the thing is, the suicide note would have been written to them. Yeah, to right. the family. I mean, that's who they would have wrote it to. So, why would you not want them to to see it or read it or even know what it said? And, I mean, you know, it is one of those situations where did we hear that from cops? No. So do we know? Not a hundred percent. But why would they lie about that? That just seems like such an odd thing to lie about. Yeah, and, and based on everything that he's doing, I don't see him lying about this. Yeah, it's just so odd. And, you know, with no foul play being involved and them acting as if it's both of them committed suicide or died by suicide, did they both leave a note or just one note? Was it one note they wrote together? I mean, I have so many questions about this. Yeah, and I, I mean, I don't... I don't know. <laughs> like, just this doesn't sound common. Um, mm -mm. For you know, and if they both did in their life that way, they came together and wrote a joint note. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it, it just, just doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. Yeah, you know, and I mean, on top of that, you know, Jesse's dad, he's continuing to to do his own research and looking into things. I mean, he found several pairs of surgical gloves in his son's truck. Didn't belong to Jesse. They're just in his son's truck, but cops were not interested. Did not care. Which, which is crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it took weeks for law enforcement to even print the truck to, to see if they could find fingerprints. And they did. They found one full and one partial print. Um, but not Jesse's. They didn't find his, but they found a full and partial print. And his dad doesn't believe they even ran him through APHIS. So... Why why go out there and look for prints if you're not even going to bother to, to run through APHIS and look? Yeah. Yeah. He also found two 45 caliber shell casings, but once again, police not interested. Yeah, it's so wild. I mean, you know, and you live and learn. So, you know, his dad has said, you know, maybe he shouldn't have left with the truck. But at the time, you don't know. Like he gets to call his son's trucks out there. He goes all the way out there. What are you just going to leave it there? Like, you don't know what's going on. And if it's unlocked and the keys are in it, I could see how you would easily be like, okay, well, it's not safe to leave his truck here unlocked with the keys in it. So I'm going to take it home. Mm -hmm. So, you know, dad did take the truck home. And I think, you know, he's probably felt like maybe he shouldn't have done that, but it doesn't sound like the police would have been out there fingerprinting yeah. it or doing anything. Cause I mean, they waited two weeks after that to do anything. Yeah, I was going to say it, it. I mean, yeah, it's not like police were doing anything anyway. It doesn't sound like they were very involved in the search. So, yeah, no. Why wouldn't you take it? It really, really doesn't. Um, you know, as far as absolutes and, and information, I couldn't find hardly anything in any kind of newspaper article which is why we went from the vanish podcast and the facebook information because it's almost as if you know law enforcement's like whatevs and so nobody's reporting on it so as far as just information that we know pretty much for sure or you know has been kind of backed up that's all we know now as far as theories there's a little more. Um, so dad said that it was explained to him and he didn't say by who he just said, explained to him that a debt was transferred on to Jesse. I'm guessing he didn't say who, because this person's probably scared like everybody else. Um, somehow there was a debt owed from Jason's household and it was put onto him. Now I don't, know how that would be unless i mean i just don't even understand the concept unless maybe 
this Jason guy tried to say he stole it or, you know, I gave it to him to sell or yeah. I'm not sure what. So the rumor mill and, and it pretty much seems like, you know, it's a consistent rumor going around is that Jesse was called to Jason R's house and then ambushed by Jason K and Sierra and beaten with tire irons. And then his body was moved to a second location. Now, one rumor is that his body was taken to Mexico and buried, but I don't think that's necessarily what dad believes. Yeah. That's a long distance to, <laughs> right? I mean, I mean, you're crossing the border. So, I mean, they may not be as thorough crossing into Mexico as it would be coming out of Mexico into the United States. But still, I mean, that's a long distance to travel with, with somebody's body in your car. Yeah, I would be terrified I'd get pulled over. I mean, any anything. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I just can't just these people call them over and then, you know, beat them with tire irons. It's just it's so ridiculous. It doesn't it really make is. sense. Well, so after rumors... There's, you know, they're flying. Well, there's a rumor of something happening in a root cellar. Um, and Jesse said went to investigate. And when he was in there looking, he found a cot, lanterns, a sledgehammer uh, with what looked like to be blood on the handle, which is the, the picture that we're showing here. Um, a cooler with beef jerky in there, a cable to, you know, hook up a dog and a big hole dug in the floor. So basically a dungeon i mean that's what it sounds like it sounds like a place you take someone you've kidnapped yeah yeah i mean that's that's the only thing i can think of i mean why else because why else would you have lanterns down there on a cot and all i mean like it, and the way that it made it sound it wasn't like it was a hole for storage i mean this yeah this sounds like a dungeon it's, but and what makes it even more suspect is he went back out there Jesse said went out there later or the next day and the guy who previously said, yeah, you can, you can check it out. All of a sudden he wouldn't let him in. Well, you can't go see it. I'm not letting you in there anymore, which it sounds Highly like. Suspect. Some, yeah. sounds like somebody talked to him and was like, what are you doing? You cannot let him in there. So he mm -hmm. came, he came out to, to take a look at it the next day. And the guy's like, no, you can't go. So you just take a dungeon and now the guy won't let you look anymore. And, and you know, that's that's super sketch. Yeah, absolutely. And and the cable to hook a dog up to, it made me think of how you would hook a dog to a runner. So it's almost like they put somebody down there and wanted them to be able to move so that they didn't have to stay with them every second. Like, okay, we want you to move enough that you can get to the water and the beef jerky, but we don't want you being able to get out of here. Yeah, it's it's kind of like when we we're talking about it. It reminded me of the the patient with Steve Carell that show. <laughs> yeah, I mean he that serial killer just locked him up in his in his downstairs, you know, room or whatever, and just chained him to the floor. And that's mm -hmm. that's exactly what this sounds like. the The scary part is is what's with the big hole that's dug in the yeah. floor. Yeah, at first I thought maybe. I know this, I mean, this sound, might sound gross to a lot of people, but I mean, you were in the military, so it probably sounds normal to you that maybe they dug a hole in the floor, as in that's where they were making him go to the restroom. But you wouldn't need a huge hole for that. And also, I feel like they would have said that it was for that. Yeah. And if that's what it's for, and I'm the one that's stuck down there, I'm not going to leave the hole open. Very true. So for me... It, it, there's only one reason why you dig a dig, why you dig a big hole mm -hmm. in the floor, and you know, but uh, they didn't find him there. So to me, that makes me think either if this were Jesse that was held down there, that either one they dug this hole in the floor and put him there, and then at some point removed him and took it somewhere else, his body, or they dug that hole there as a message to, to, to scare him, to just terrify him the entire time he was there. As in like, this is where we're going to put you when we're done. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot was said on that page about rumors of them holding him for like two weeks and not just holding him, but torturing him. I don't know why hmm. they would have done that, but 
you know, I guess that could go along with this debt that is owed. I mean, if they did feel like he owed them money, like he had taken money or taken drugs, do you think maybe they could have been trying to like get it back, like trying to torture him so he would tell them or? I mean, I, I guess, but it's like, I don't like, where is he? It's not like he's some, you know, drug cartel and he's hiding drugs. I mean, and my, the other thing is, is I don't understand why when people owe money to somebody, they turn around and kill them. It's like, you, you're not going to get anything if you, if you murder someone, you're not going to get anything. Right. I know it may send a message to everybody else, but I don't feel like out here in, in no, you know, middle of the nowhere, I, Iowa, there's, there's a bunch of drug runners running around. So, I mean, who are you sending a message to? Well, and also when you want to send a message, aren't you wanting someone to find the body? Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, I mean you can't just... just be like, oh, hey, we, we made him disappear. Okay. Well, you know, people may believe that, but it's more of a message if, you know, you, you do something horrific to them. And, you know, because, I mean, think about what the cartels do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they, they leave Ooh. a message for sure. For so. sure. Now, I know, um, you know, I wrote up our outline for us to discuss this and it wasn't in the outline because I don't necessarily remember seeing it listed in the list of things when I read about it. But when I was when I went back out there to get pictures to see if I could find pictures of the items, um, if you go to the last slide there, it did not mention surgical gloves, but apparently blue surgical gloves were found in the cellar as well. And I found that interesting considering the fact that they appear to match what was found in his truck from the way I understand it. Which is just another thing law enforcement is not, you know, concerned with that, that doesn't intrigue them at all. Right. I mean, I mean it's, it's crazy. It sounds to me like, you know, Jesse's dad did the investigation and had a whole lot of leads that the police didn't bother to follow. Yeah. I mean, I mean, somebody, you know, there's lots of people from Boone, Iowa, in the comments talking on there for, for all these years now. And somebody was saying a while back, I read one of their comments, I think it was from 2018 or 19, but was saying that, you know, they were from Boone and that it's common knowledge there in those crowds that Jesse was involved in something and was killed as payback and to shut him up. So it, it's almost like one of those cases where you see it get solved 20 years down the road mm -hmm. because a cold case team goes back in and finds out that, Oh, even though it's not been solved, apparently everyone in this town knew what happened the entire time. Oddly enough, that person that made that comment on there um, as I kept scrolling through, I saw where um, I think it was last year or the year before. So I think he made the comment in 18 or 19. And then in like either, I think it was, I think it was 21, but it was 20 or 21. Somebody went back and responded to that comment said, Oh yeah. Isn't it funny that you're dead now too. And I don't know wow. if this guy, and I went and looked, I didn't see anything like active on his Facebook, but it's kind of locked down. So I was like, is this dude dead now too? Like, did somebody kill him? Dang. And it's you know, typically, crazy. Typ yeah, typically we would have the dates, the exact dates, especially her because she's a huge research yeah. nut. But I mean, you're talking about a Facebook page that's almost seven years old. So, yeah. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of stuff out there. But And the thing is, is, it's nuts, like, though. yeah. And, and the thing is, okay, so we typically are all about facts. Like we're not just going to put all this crazy stuff and throw it at the wall and see what sticks. However, I I feel like if the news is not going to cover this and the cops don't seem to be concerned and the only one out there is his dad, mm -hmm. would it be better ethically to just not cover it because we don't have all these sources we can cite or to cover it with what at least he feels like he's found out? Mm -hmm. We, you know, we didn't, I'm Facebook's public unless they mark it private, it's, this page is not private. So anyone could go out there and see these names, but we did not put any last names. We didn't add, you know, any, any other people peripherally that might, you know, have, have been talked about being involved. So 
ethically, I feel like that any speculation we've done has been completely fair. Well, that and I mean, the information that we're getting, it's not like anybody's refuting it. You know? <laughs> well, that's true, too. So, I mean, it's it's put out there and it's not like anybody is saying, no, that's not what happened or they're offering something different. I mean, it's it's just out there and nobody seems to care except for, you know, the people in that area, but not law enforcement. So, you know, yeah. like you said, typically we, we, we do speculate, but it's with facts. Um, and, you know, we, we kind of give our theories, but on this one, like what's your, what's your, what's your final theory on this, on what happened? Well, first, let me just say in fairness to all parties involved, there was a post on there from someone who said they were Sierra's mom and that they had proof that she wasn't even in the state when this happened. So she couldn't have been involved. However, she provided no proof even after people asked and asked and asked, they were like, okay, well, where's the proof? Like show it to us, show yeah. us anything. If you're going to so, come out and say you got proof, you better bring it. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, um, I don't know any of these people, so I don't know enough about any of them to say exactly what happened but i do get the feeling it had something to do with drugs and considering the the jason guy whose house they were supposedly at when he was beaten and his mom showed up dead and they don't want to talk about it it kind of makes me wonder if that it and maybe the exact story of what happened yeah well and then the guy making the comment on facebook and then you know you get a year or so down the road on the Facebook page and somebody says, you know, something about him being dead now. Mm -hmm. So it's just, I don't know. It's, it feels like one of those things where it's so crazy to think that this could be the truth, that it is the truth. Yeah. And, you know, one of those truth is stranger than fiction type of things. So, and it, the only other theory that I saw someone put out was that, the Jason K guy, they said that they did not believe. And, and I say, I just bring it up because one person floated the theory or rumor or whatever. And then several people like, Oh yeah. Yeah. And they were all talking about it. So it, I mean, it's just as plausible as anything else, but they said that this Jason K guy, they don't believe he actually was capable of cold blooded murder. So they don't believe that he actually killed him. They said that they think he actually, and I don't know this, but that he accidentally shot him. Now, I don't know how he accidentally shot him or accidentally killed him, but I mean, that and and he found, and there was two forty five casings. Did you accidentally shoot him twice? Yeah. Well, and what were you doing that caused you to accidentally shoot him? Yeah. Uh, potentially twice. Exactly. I mean, you know, because he, yeah, sure. Maybe you're showing somebody your your gun and it's loaded because you're an idiot and you didn't bother to clear it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know how you. And then if you did, how do you not say anything? Yeah. I mean, I know you're probably worried about getting in trouble, but after this long, you still don't say anything. I don't know. I also i have a i have a problem with with all of these things not being investigated. Yeah. You know, I don't want to, I don't know anything about the law enforcement agencies out there. It just seems very odd that they didn't at least follow up and look into these things, you know, keeping the suicide note, uh, you know, not saying anything, especially like you were saying earlier, that's something that's written to the families. Yeah. It's not written to law enforcement. The only thing I can hope is that, you know, how sometimes I mean, we've see we see this all the time. That it's kind of like the fish story. The story grows and grows and grows because it mm -hmm. gets exaggerated. So, I I think it could be one possibility is that maybe the police didn't say you'll never see it so much as it's evidence. We're not going to show it to you, and they took that and said they're never going to show it to us. So you know, maybe the police are investigating something that was in that suicide note they're just not telling dad because i mean we did see from you know the idaho case that and i don't mean this in any way because i completely understand why he did it 
but we did see in the Idaho case how, you know, there was one parent that was very vocal mm -hmm. and, and talking about a, a lot of, to do with the case. And there was a lot of, you know, backlash that came his way about, you know, well, that's why the cops aren't talking to you because you're talking. Um, I don't think he in any way was trying to jeopardize the case. So, you know, I think he was grieving, but, you know, it, knowing that the police probably weren't talking to him because of that. I wonder if maybe because, you know, this dad has made this Facebook page and has been investigating himself and all, maybe there are police working on it. They're just not telling him, but it's been a long time. I mean, you, you are, you are really reaching for some optimism. I um, know. But I my know. thing is, is didn't the host of the vanished podcast, like file the paperwork that she needed to, to get, this information and the cops are like, Nope, not giving it. Yeah. Anymore. Yeah. So I'm I mean, pretty sure. Yeah. I mean, my thing is, is it's, it's kind of like the, you know, Sierra's mom saying, I've got proof that she wasn't involved. Well, what's the proof? Cricket. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So my thing is, is I don't, I'm not saying law enforcement is involved. It does bother me that somebody is asking to see this stuff and law enforcement is like, no. Well, yeah. Why not? The only reason you don't show something is one, if there's an active investigation, which there isn't, or two, you got something to hide. Yeah. That's that's my thoughts personally. I'm not saying that's what's going on, but for me, if you're not showing somebody something, it's because you have something to hide. But I don't know. And, you know, it kind of goes, you know, about the investigation. Are they doing one or not? Because this is kind of the part in the podcast where we would show a missing persons flyer and say, Hey, if you have any information, contact law enforcement at whatever number. And guess what? There isn't one. Yeah. They're not looking into this. They're not, they're not, he's, his disappearance is, is whatever to them. It's case closed. It's over when there's yeah. clearly a lot of stuff that they, they could at least follow up on. And, you know, as people are listening to this, if anyone knows differently, I mean, we are never too proud to say, oops, we were wrong. We got it wrong. So if if anybody out there knows of, you know, some flyer they're putting out with information or some investigation they're doing, please let us know. Because I would sleep better knowing they were actually investigating this. Yeah. But I, I mean, didn't see where they were. I don't like being wrong, but this is one of the times I would I would really love to be wrong to see that there Absolutely. is an investigation, somebody looking into something. Um, but as for the Facebook page um, and all the sources and also the, the slides that we have cotrpod.com they'll be on there. And then the link to the Facebook will be in the show notes or in the description of the video, depending on how you're watching it. So if you do have any information and I mean, I, I want to show the truck, you know, one more time because it is very, it's one of those trucks that even if you haven't seen it in a long time, you'll probably remember it. Cause I mean, yeah. just looking at it, I mean, that is, it's definitely not a color that you see often. I, I don't, honestly, I don't remember. I don't know of any car I've ever seen that color. <laughs> I haven't it, either. It's very distinctive, you know? So even though it was several years ago, you know, somebody might know something. They might've seen something. So if you do, there is a Facebook page that you can reach out to um, and, and, you know, leave a comment out there. I mean, I guess you could attempt to, you know, talk to one of the sheriff's departments um, out there trying to go back and see what the remember it's Boone story or Hamilton County um, in Iowa. If you have any information, you can reach out to them as well. But I mean, yeah. Cause at this point, I mean, I don't doubt for a second, his dad wants justice for him a and he should, mm -hmm. but I think that even beyond that, he just wants to be able to bury his son and to know where yeah. he's at. So, I mean, I would hope somebody would come forward and tell exactly what happened. But at the very least, for God's sakes, if you know where he's at, at least, I mean, send it anonymously. Just tell the man where his kid's at. Yeah. Like, no parent should have to go to sleep every night for years and years and years wondering where their child is at. Yeah. That's horrible. Because, you know, it's like you said, his dad doesn't have any, like, he he doesn't have any, any you know, thoughts that his son is still alive. He, he you know, he just wants to be able to bury his son. Yeah. And it's, it's heartbreaking. It really is. It truly is. So yeah. So if anybody knows anything about this, please reach out to somebody and let them know. Cause I mean, this dad deserves to find some answers. But, 
But that is everything on Jesse Leopold. If you, however you're listening to this or watching this, please make sure you subscribe. Um, it's all about the number of people that we can reach and, and make sure that these people are not forgotten and, you know, potentially get justice for these people. So like I said, make sure you subscribe, um, leave us a comment, let us know what's going on. If you have any questions, you can email us at crime on the record at gmail.com. And like I said, all the information will be in the show notes or in the description of the video or at cotrpod.com. But we will be back next week with another case. Yep. Bye.